on the inpatient side of things, you know, maybe take us through just like your typical day for that, you know, uh, you know, I imagine you probably do rounds and, and probably do, I guess, you know, obviously it's a mix of probably evaluating new and, and older patients. Um, you know, do you guys take turns who's admitting for the day or things like that, or I guess, how, do, how does that all kind of run? So the admissions that come in overnight are divided up in the morning. So we know who's new in the morning. We try to keep those if, if like my resident admitted them, the resident is working with me on my team at the moment. We try to keep it with the resident to the best of our ability. Those get divided up in the morning. Um, and then the new admissions get seen the next day by us. So the resident or the resident that's on call currently, we're doing a night float system. So one of a resident will have already seen them, but we probably won't see them until the next day is the typical um, schedule for, for the new folks. We go in, you know, I probably start most days around eight, somewhere between eight and eight 30. And we will go around and sort of go over the, what happened overnight. And then we'll go around with the resident, the medical student and sort of see the patients. And typically we're done by 1130 or 12 then I'll need to go and sign, you know, there's always sign notes, you know, they need a back to work slip. Um, our patients, not all of them want to be in the hospital voluntarily. So some of them have to be civilly committed. So on those individuals, sometimes you'll have a hearing. Um, they, they were during, they used to be in person. So pre COVID, uh, there's a attorney for the patient there's an attorney from the board who represents like us. And then there's a magistrate that serves as the judge. And those hearings will, the magistrate will make the decision. So if the patient wants to leave and I really feel like they need to stay, we'll have a hearing. The magistrate will make that decision about whether they stay in the hospital or whether they leave. So that would be thrown in there in any particular day. You might have a hearing. Usually we know of those ahead of time. So you can, all, you know, that could take if if you're going forward with the hearing, that could take twenty to thirty minutes. Gotcha, gotcha. Okay, and then those days when you are doing the more of your kind of wearing your forensic psychiatry hat, are those um, are those days? Are you are you typically flying solo, or do you have residents that come with you at those times? Or uh, and I guess how does that? Uh, I guess do you kind of do your rounds in a sense uh, similar to how you would in the inpatient unit on those days? So at the jail, there's a nurse, there's a de dedicated behavioral health nurse who rounds with me. So we'll have a list of patients. It's a little bit of a wish list because it's always a really long list because there's more patients in the correctional setting than we can uh, sort of manage easily. So there's usually a long list. We see who we tried to prioritize, uh, who's not on medication and who came in, who's a new evaluation, anybody that we know is specifically having trouble that we've heard either from the deputies or from the medical nurses or uh, the counselors who are sort of seeing them routinely. So the, but the nurse will, will sort of round with me and we see as many people as we can in the time we have allotted. I don't, unless I have somebody shadowing, a lot of people are interested for some reason in correctional psychiatry. So sometimes I have a medical student or a resident who's really sort of interested in that patient population and really wants to come. So sometimes we'll have people shadow us and they will come with us and, and just basically observe. The forensic psychiatry fellows need to have a correctional psychiatry experience. So we have a forensic psychiatry fellow who is there as well. They are though at a, they're at a different time than I am. So they're, because you're really board eligible at that point, some of them board certif get board certified during that fellowship because that's when they took their exam. Um, they can see their own patients just with supervision. And so they come at a different time, have their own individual caseload that they follow just like I do. So we don't necessarily intersect um, with the exception of super uh, supervision for them. And I, Dr. Bodner, a different psychiatrist has taken that over this year gotcha. from me. Um, and then at John Carroll, where I do student health, I usually have a resident there, as, there with me as well. So that's a, once you do your, your first two years in psychiatry, it's a lot of inpatient work, internal medicine, neurology, consultation liaison. But by the time you get to your third and fourth year, it's more outpatient. So it's an elective. Um, 
John Carroll is an elective doing, you know, student counseling at Case is an elective. So that's up to them. But I inevitably have a resident who's there. The resident is also seeing their own patients while they're there. And then we have the last hour of the day for supervision to go over things, but we're always there at the same time. So if there's any questions between patients, we can also address those. Gotcha. And then when you're working at, you know, in the universe, at these university settings, whether it's at Case Western or John Carroll University, is that, is that more of an outpatient or are those patients, do they kind of come in as an as needed basis or are these patients that you more follow on a long, like over a long period of time, I guess, maybe kind of walk, walk us through that. Uh, that aspect of your, of your work? Those are undergraduate and graduate students who are enrolled in the university who are having, it can be the whole gamut of mental health problems, but it is outpatient. So there's psychologists and social workers who also do like psychotherapy, um, counseling with the students. If they feel like they would benefit from a medication, they'll refer them to us for an evaluation and then we'll We'll do just like you would in a normal outpatient setting. It is uh, almost by design because you either graduate in four years or five years, or you know you you decide to leave and do something else. It is by design, sort of a shorter term model, I guess I would say. It's not like you're going to follow somebody for twenty years, so it's a little shorter term. The age of the population is also sort of what we call transitional age these these days, but you know usually between eighteen and twenty six ish. Um, and a case it's you know, a case is an interesting university because it's kind of half undergrad, half graduate students. So, and we would have the, the medical students, the law students, sort of the whole range, PhD students, people there who might just be getting their, or might be doing like an MBA. So they're just there for two years. So it's, it was quite a range. It's a little different in case John Carroll's uh, obviously smaller. 